Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from Somos Biology. And in this lecture, we are going to talk about line and sign. What are these lines and signs? And uh, what are their features? We are going to talk about the role of lines and signs, uh, as well as their properties and the differences between lines and signs. Now, in very simple terms, uh, this is this is about eukaryotic uh, genomic understanding. And when we write this two term, line and sign what are they what are these right in very very simple words what i can say is that these are all transposable elements transposable elements these are all transposable elements in very simple terms what are transposable elements transposable elements are elements in the in the dna in this case lines and signs the elements in the eukaryotic genome which can jump from one place to the other place of the same chromosome or of into a different chromosomal location. So basically these are also known as jumping genes uh, where the part of this DNA element basically stretch of nucleotide sequences. So stretch of some base pairs of the nucleotide DNA and those base pairs of the DNA can move from one location of the genome to the other location of the same DNA, uh, chromosome or from one location of the chromosome to a different chromosome altogether but that is the jumping capabilities that is the transposable capabilities. So this process is known as transposition, it is known as transposition and transposition is a mechanism through which this jumping genes or transposable elements move from one location to the other location of the same chromosome or the different chromosome. That is a simple understanding of transposable elements and there are two examples we are looking at. We are looking at line and sign both as transposable elements. Now the difference between these two if you write for line, the line elements are autonomous, autonomous element for transposition. They are autonomous so they do not require any other uh, gene components help to move from one location to the other. So they are autonomous in nature and they are uh, copy, they follow a copy paste type transposition, a copy paste type transposition involving, uh, involving retro, retro transposition using reverse transcriptase enzyme. Now why do, why do they need reverse, transcript, reverse transcriptase enzyme because uh, we have the DNA right. So we have the DNA from DNA first they will make mRNA and using this mRNA we are making copy of the complementary DNA right. And this complementary DNA is then used for the purpose of transposition, okay. That is why uh, we require a conversion of complementary DNA from RNA. For this purpose, we need reverse, transcript, reverse transcriptase enzyme. For this particular purpose, we need reverse transcriptase enzyme converting mRNA into complementary DNA. So these lines are autonomous transposable elements in eukaryotic genome. Why they are autonomous? Because they carry, they carry enzyme coding regions. What are the enzymes that they require? They require reverse transcriptase as an enzyme. They also require endonuclease. They also require endonuclease. Okay. Why they need endonuclease? Because this is a transposition mechanism. When we prepare our part or fragment of the DNA to be transposed, right, they need to cut the target DNA. To cut the target DNA from the middle, they need endonuclease enzyme which will cut the target DNA from the middle and then they will transfer it to the new location and paste it there. For pasting it there, they require ligase that is also present. And they have reverse transcriptase enzyme which will convert the mRNA into complementary DNA. So these aligns, they have their endonuclease, they have their reverse transcriptase ligase enzymes 
to be produced by that element itself they have all the components inside so this line components are pretty big okay they are near about 6000 base pair imagine 6000 base pair long sequence as a transposable element 6000 base pair is long why i say it's long because sines on the other hand the full form is short interspersed nuclear element lines full form long interspersed nuclear element sine short interspersed nuclear element why it is by definition short short means how much uh, it is 100 to 200 100 to 300 base pair let's say 100 to 300 base pair uh, sequence so 100 to 300 base pair is the length for the short interspersed nuclear element but for line is 6000 base pair length of the long interspersed nuclear element now signs are also transposable elements they can also do the jumping part but they are non autonomous non autonomous signs signs require the help of line sequence for the purpose of transposition so signs require the help of line element for the purpose of transposition that is another important idea because signs lack signs lack the presence of any kind of uh, enzyme coding genetic elements in it so they don't have uh, enzyme coding uh, like endonuclease or reverse transcriptase enzyme coding elements they lack that right and with the help of line only they can transpose uh, that they can transposition the transposition is possible from one location to the other that is short that is the role of short interspersed nuclear elements now these elements both of these elements are present in the mostly in the, they are present in the non coding region in the non coding region of uh, the eukaryotic genome Right? They are not coding for, they are not coding any protein. Lines, still they code for proteins like the enzymes like reverse transcriptase uh, enzyme, endonuclease enzyme, but signs they don't code for any of them. Okay. And uh, one more thing I can tell you is that once they are, they are part of the eukaryotic genome and what is the percentage that they, they have in their eukaryotic genome, their fair share of the percentage, lines approximately 17% of the eukaryotic genome is contributed by this line and 11% is from sign short interspersed nuclear element 11% line long interspersed nuclear element that is 17% together they, they contribute 28% of the eukaryotic genome 28% of the eukaryotic genome just imagine just imagine and we always say that uh, these are there are elements out there we always say there are elements out there uh, so the whole human genome, 17% of the whole human genome is built by lines and 11% and of the whole human genome uh, is built by uh, the signs. Okay? So we always imagine this idea like the genome should carry information to make RNA. From the RNA we can make proteins. So we always think from the perspective of production of proteins because entirely the protein that is produced is, are going to be utilized by the organism for their regular functionality but apart from the production of protein or the capability of production of protein also what we have is uh, the regulation of gene expression and this regulation of the gene expression that is really important and this regulation of gene expression is basically concluded or, or basically responded by uh, regulated by these lines and signs and all the other category of, of uh, proteins if you see the tandem repeats are out there which helps in the process of regulation any sorts of modification in the region of our uh, genome can lead to genetic diversity that can lead to genomic evolution which is generally brought by both lines and signs in here okay now what are the examples if you are going to talk about the examples here uh, then I must say the example for the lines are lines are simply known as uh, lines line 1 line 2 line 3 we write as L1 L2 L3 these are all examples of line elements long interspersed nuclear elements while for signs uh, they are simply termed as AR, ALU elements ALU elements ALU or M I R MIR elements so ALU and MIR ALU and MIR these are part of short interspersed uh, nuclear elements 
where L1, L2, L3, line 1, line 2, line 3 are the part of long interspersed nuclear element. These, these are their uh, nomenclature, the terms. Okay? And their role in the genome is basically to disrupt, disrupt uh, the gene expression. That's it. Their primary role is to disrupt the gene expression. Now, if they disrupt the gene expression, the regulation of the gene is disrupted. As the regulation of the gene is disrupted, that may lead to uh, alteration, alteration in gene expression. Gene expression alteration is done and as there is a gene expression alteration, that will lead to uh, change in the way the genes are expressed, the way a particular gene is expressed. As it is altered like that way, uh, we know that ultimately that leads to the way the organism behave, the way they are, if, if the gene expression is altered, basically they will regulate which genes to express, when to express, when not to express and how much of the gene is to express. Because the gene expression is not all or not, like it's not like one or zero binary, but also the gene expression level can be high level of expression, moderate level of expression, least level of expression. That can also be regulated by this line uh, and shine elements, particularly the sign elements, uh, disruption of the gene regulation. And that leads to uh, small changes, leads to the, the diversity in terms of uh, that originates diversity of the gene expression. As a result of the diversity of the genome is generated, that may lead to the genomic evolution. So, genomic diversity and genomic evolution is the ultimate result of this transposition that take place in the eukaryotic genome due to the presence of line, due to the presence of sign, right? So, that is the overall understanding of lines and signs as jumping elements, as uh, the transposable elements in eukaryotic genome. I believe you have a clear idea understanding lines and signs. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and colleagues, subscribe to get more videos like that in future. Thank you. Bye.